Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and this may well be the last time I can say this. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome. The reason I say that is our new name is on the governor's desk. So maybe by the next meeting, we'll just be the select board. But I've enjoyed this limbo time. It's been quite fun. Anyway, first up tonight, we have our fire chief and some handsome devils who may or may not have contributed many, many of their own hours, as well as time and energy, and gone to uh, Fire Academy and graduated. And then Lauren and, Lauren and company are going to update us on the Village Center Committee update. And there's an important meeting next week about that because we have to get to some design stand to some design consensus to move forward. We've got some minutes. We've got an update about our town administrator uh, search. Uh, and we have two more interviews this week. One is tomorrow at 6. And then we have another one Thursday at either 6 or 6.30. And that was it. 6.30. And that is it for our... That is it for our uh, interviewing, second interview process. So without further ado, if we can call the order at 635, because I need to do that. Uh, we're five minutes behind schedule because we're commiserating about cars tonight. So that said, Chief, you got three handsome devils. They all got uniform. Well, two do. Yeah. What? Well, we, we were, were on a call. Nice. What? <laughs> We were helping out South County EMS okay. with a call here in town. Uh, yep. And the time we worked out, we just got back from the hospital. Several of us, so we, we came as we were. There you have it. <laughs> so, fire away, Chief. We get three graduates. Three graduates. To my left is John Sullivan, John. Tim Gochinski, Tim. and Josh Mannheim. Nice. And these three gentlemen graduated from the Call Volunteer Fire Academy in Springfield in October. Yep. And this is a program put on by the Department of Fire Services. Uh, it's a very, very similar program to what a full time career firefighter would go through but the DFS has been kind enough to modify some of the content, but more than that, modify the schedule to right. accommodate people that have careers right. and are calling volunteer firefighters. So what they did is they put in, probably ended up being a little over 200 hours outside within seven months, and this was all evenings, weekends, and they were really run through the ringer, both physically and um, intellectually, mm -hmm. with things simple um, as fire fire behavior, put water on it, goes out. Uh, to sometimes, hazard. yeah, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole more simplified, but also uh, hazardous materials. A little bit about using radios, incident command, and really countless other things. So, I'm glad that you were interested in having them come out and be recognized because they really did sacrifice a lot. Their families deserve a lot of credit right. for putting up with yeah. the, yeah. the absences and yeah. uh, the yes. inability to have a vacation or schedule a family outing over a weekend for the better part of the summer. And all of this so you can be called out to be away from your family anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of makes you wonder. Consistent, wonder. right? I, I, I don't ask them to think about that part of it all that much. Right, right. Um, but these guys are really really excited about what they do mm. i am blessed beyond a, a doubt to have them on the department and we've got more guys on the department that went to the graduation and as they were walking out they more or less said hey chief i want to do this next year i want to do this next year so uh, we've got a couple more that will be uh, hopefully that's going great news. next year that's awesome nice uh, on the class again Brilliant. Well, congratulations to you all. Yeah. Tom, you want to weigh in? Yeah, Steve, Stevie and uh, Mr. Sullivan, Gashinsky, and Mannheim, um, when we first got uh, Steve's email uh, announcing that your graduation, that you had attended and graduated, um, a, lot of, a lot of times you go back 40 years ago and you were a member of the fire department, um, you went down and there was an application on the on the uh, the desk because nobody was there, uh, and you took the application and they asked you three or four questions. You and you uh, turned it in, and if you were accepted, you and that was always a big if um, you were give you some turnout gear, a beeper, and you're a member of the Sunland Volunteer. Firefighting crew. 
um, today, um, <clears throat> as anybody that had served on EMTs on our on the ambulance before we went to South County will tell you, our volunteers, um, you guys have to do a lot. And a lot of people don't recognize the fact that even if you hadn't done the, uh, the training that you went through, which was 200 plus hours of, of time down in Springfield, let's yeah. talk about all this time that you spent <clears throat> studying. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but if anybody ever gave me a test, you, you'd probably spend three hours for every one hour in class to learn. So, so you guys probably, between travel and everything, you got over a thousand hours um, invested in the class. And a thousand hours to, is a, basically a full part-time job. Um, we're proud of you. Um, the town's proud of you because people, people um, choose to serve and to volunteer and help their communities in different ways. But you guys not only answer the call when the alarm rings, but you do it in a professional manager, manner because you don't, when you walk into a, a building or uh, a scene, a car scene today, to, and, and you think about it, before you had to worry about gas, right? That was easy. You could see gas, smell gas. Now you got hybrids, okay? And you got to find out where you got to find out where that battery is so you can cut the line so you get rid of sparks and everything. And it's a totally different world out there. But you guys um, we, we thought it was important that people see the faces behind the names, behind um, you see if coming and asking for a new fire truck for five hundred nine thousand six hundred and thirty two dollars. Um, Some of there's a three in there too, uh, right? There's a three in there also someplace. Um, <laughs> but, but, so I, I guess basically the people see the five hundred thousand dollars for the fire truck, but they haven't seen the people that stand behind, ride that truck. And I thought it was a great opportunity to take take a, a moment and introduce you guys to the town and say thank you. Um, cause we understand it's a big commitment. Um, not only that though, but when we have people respond, the chief has people, <coughs> the chief isn't in town, he has a, he has a team that is well trained um, and is gonna respond um, and get the job done. Um, and that's, that's important to the chief as well, that to have trust in you guys um, so I just want to say thank you thank you very much and from the town as well <coughs> thank you mr. chair Dave you want to echo or weigh in or I, rock, I, paper scissors yeah I, I just echo it and I'm, it's your service is really appreciated I think uh, it's one of the one of the most important jobs in the town as far as that kind of stuff goes and uh, <coughs> it's greatly appreciated and there's a lot of hard work in there and I'm not gonna stop talking now because my voice is kind of disappearing, so, but we really appreciate it. So there's still a little mirror down at the station, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, stop by the mirror every now and then, next to his picture. <coughs> yeah. His picture's not up yet. Not yet? No. Well, they've been I trying think. to get him to shave, but he won't uh, shave. Yeah. So. <laughs> they want to see the man behind the beard, but. Uh, I see. He's been busy for the last several years. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it may, I, I heard maybe when the new truck comes, they, may get, they may get a smile out of him. Uh, Fundraiser. Right? Yeah, a fun Sh fundraiser. A shaving yeah. fundraiser. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's potential. You know, you can't do one of those alone. That, I understand. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> wait till the first day of spring and I'm in. There you go. <clears throat> That's the way it's been for a long, long time. First, <laughs> first day of spring. You got it. Well, thanks again and congratulations to you all. We really appreciate it. If you want to shake your hand. Chief, you want to report on your, in your truck? I can certainly do that. Thanks. Yeah, I was there with him. One of the guys that helped Thank us. You. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Very much. And eventually worked through all of the ins and outs, and we're out in South Dakota last two weeks ago, a short week before Thanksgiving. We saw the truck, we drove the truck, witnessed an NFPA STM pump test. Um, there was a short punch list on it. Nothing serious. Twos and threes, huh? Yeah. Some lettering. They get a little carried away on the lettering to yeah, no. get it going. But um, are they just going to add minus one to the three? Yeah. 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 Fair. Try not to add a lot of math on it. It's yeah. A, but you know, add a handle here, add a step there, simple things. 
they're saying that delivery is going to be in the neighborhood of Christmas. Hmm. Uh, Merry so Christmas. It could be a Christmas present. have Santa with it? And uh, you never know. Mm. Wow. You know? Good. But Bring Santa Claus in on it. Guy from yes. North Sunderland. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's coming. It looks good. It's how's, it get, how's it get here? It'll be, they'll drive it. Really? Huh. They're going to put the Drive first 2,000 miles on it before we yeah. even get it. Well, but we put probably was what, John, maybe 30, 40, mm. maybe about 25 or 30 miles on it. And Their city blocks are very big out there. Yeah. 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 They're large. When they say go to the intersection and turn left, take a lunch with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. The, uh, the important thing is they'll, <laughs> when they drive it out, Sometimes a lot of these bugs are identified within the first couple yeah, of thousand sense. miles. Commissioning, so right. we're better off having them drive it. Nice long rides, the motor heats up, the ring seat, good for the engine, and uh, they should have it all gussied up and ready for us in a couple of weeks. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's a great update. I'm sure they want to build it out. Yeah. Yeah. They're 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 interested in, in that uh, in that transaction. <laughs> without a doubt. But they are. But they've uh, it's a big place. They have a lot of trucks. I was I was very surprised, not surprised, but I was very taken at how much attention they gave to us when we were there. Mm -hmm. It would have been very easy for them to just have us go look at the truck, call us if you need anything. But they had one, sometimes two people with us the whole time. They invested an awful lot in making sure that it was what we wanted, um, not just specification-wise, but also those things you can't convey in the spec. Right, right. Um, they were sincere and genuine. And uh, when you look at the other trucks that they're building, some less expensive than ours, some that cost four times what we're spending, um, there wasn't a real difference in the quality. Huh. So it's not like we got you know, some afterthought type of an assembly. Yeah, it wasn't that's built down to cost, which that's is right. nice. That's right. It was built yeah. to what we wanted and, and that's good. to the same quality as the trucks that were much more expensive Excellent. than what, what we're getting. Good for them. So well, we look forward, to, look forward to seeing it. Thank you, Stevie. Thank you. So much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good holiday. Okay. Let's talk let's talk about School Street, Carlos. And Lauren and company. Come on down. So we're gonna have an update now on uh, the workings of the Village Center working group working on the School Street project. Carlos has been working on the design piece. There have been a couple of meetings. I was at one, Tom was at one. Yep. And we need, based on the email, I think, in the next short period of time, some consensus about the design yes. so that it can be forwarded. So I'm going to give you a very quick update because okay. Carlos actually has to get somewhere. So we're going to Sorry. try to oh, get no, him. No we're going to try to Appreciate move this time. along. But just to back up, the Village Center Committee was formed to <clears> really look at the character and opportunities in the center of town mm -hmm. and to take into consideration what's happening on North Main Street, mm -hmm. um, School Street, what might happen at the intersection. And I think, so I think we have sort of inherited the School Street project. We are looking at the intersection mm -hmm. and I think I would characterize our involvement in North Main Street as somewhat of coordination, particularly to make sure it gets coordinated with School Street. Right. Um, so we had a meeting to sort of get started and get to know our members and address some of the uh, issues that, you know, everyone's coming at it from a slightly different point of view, which is interesting. Um, we then um, had a, a second meeting and our third meeting was with Maureen Mullaney from the college, uh, particularly about the intersection. Yeah. And um, I think uh, her recommendation, one thing we might want to look at is doing a meeting with DOT sooner rather than later kind of start to understand what the options are, whether it is a roundabout, if it's not a roundabout, what might it look like, how are we gonna solve some of the traffic problems that we're having, the traffic and safety, um, at, while preserving some sort of sense of character in the center of town. I think that's right. the tension. Um, and, Always is. And I think, um, meanwhile, there has been some adjustments to the light. Well, as a matter of fact, yeah, so uh, just the other left day, arrow. the left Sometimes, arrow was not activated. Yep. Um, not really sure what triggers <clears throat> it. And I think another thing is, you know, <laughs> even in this interim period, working to try to make the existing situation better because we know we're getting the traffic back up um, and, right. you know, there are, are issues that we maybe could work on in the short term that maybe help us in the long term. So going forward, I think we're going to, once we know what the realities are for the intersection, we'd like to look at doing some kind of visioning exercise to see what are the options for the center of town. 
get people <coughs> excited about you know which way that could go. What we're here tonight about is really School Street and next Monday at your meeting we've posted a joint meeting um, because we need to give Carlos a direction because if we want to submit for the Mass Works grant he needs to get going um, to be at 50 or 60 percent construction drawings um, for that application. So we are, that's why time is of the essence. So I know Cindy's helping to promote the meeting, make sure we have the abutters here and um, whatever else we can do to get some input. Um, we have worked with Carlos, however, on um, following up from the last public meeting. Right. Um, we've kind of narrowed it down to two options that mostly have to do with the with the parking, yeah. um, which we think are is really, um, you know, we to some extent want to defer to the residents of the street. Um, there are pros and cons. Um, in general, though, we've answered all the other questions and I think they've been responsive to what um, concerns there were. So I'll let Carlos run through it kind of quickly today and then next week we'll have a more thorough meeting. Questions you know, and answers. Here. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> we also will we'll have more graphics. Yeah. So it'll have the kind of the 3D model type of graphics that we had last time so it's okay. better to visualize uh, in different sections of, of, of the uh, two concepts. Mm -hmm. But just to start off with, with concept, basically everything got narrowed down and we took all the uh, input that we got from the, again, the neighbors. Uh -huh. And in, in particular, we, we moved away from the idea of having posts on the, on, on the side of, right. on the opposite side, on the south side. So we've kept the, the posts to the north side, the way that they are now, we would just adjust them so they will be at the right location. Um, the other, um, we, this is set on the idea of, the, of having a sidewalk on that side. It seemed like there was a lot of, of you know, people discussing that they didn't want to want to see that. So what, how we've, um, now what we have is these two concepts. One that basically has uh, parallel parking um, along the north side um, of School Street. And then a, another concept that has mostly uh, 90 degree parking, again, uh, along the north side of, of School Street. We've left on the uh, concept two, the one with the 90 degree parking, we've left some parallel parking um, right, across, uh, right behind uh, the corner store and next to the historical uh, uh, building there, historical commission mid building there. Uh, the idea is to, to, to provide some parking for, for that use and also um, having some um, space for uh, deliveries for the actual corner store there. Oh, yeah. um, two, uh, one other uh, item that we, we had um, discussions with the neighbors that they wanted to uh, really uh, uh, do some uh, traffic calming um, on, the, on the street. So what we've provided right now are, are two areas of traffic calming. Well, I would say three areas. First of all, by narrowing down the entrance, that kind of uh, slows, once makes people slow down as they come in and they understand that they're coming into more of a, of a residential or, a, or an area that has public that are gonna be there so that we should be slowing down. Um, which is in both of the concepts that's uh, repeated. Uh, and then uh, creating a, uh, a, what we call a traffic table or an area where it's gonna be elevated, not, you know, not, not terribly elevated, but the idea is also that cars would have to slow down as they get um, to that area right in front of the entrance, formalizing uh, that um, entrance to the uh, town offices, just to emphasize that uh, kind of as a, threshold where people are going to understand that there is a, a municipal building there and then once you get from this all point on it'll it, it all this infrastructure kind of goes down there's no more parking there's no um, uh, anything uh, major happening except for the fact that we're going to be continuing that sidewalk as we always talked about uh, so we could have access back down to uh, the boat launch um, and then we've also included which again was uh, directly from the um, information from or the uh, uh, people from, from the street that they that, that live here, the residents, um, they were mentioning that some of these uh, vehicles as they come out of the port ramp, um, they, they, they speed up, or if they are confused of where they are, they once they turn around, they kind of speed up. So we've included also uh, another uh, traffic calming, again, another uh, uh, low, you know, maybe three inches to four inches, but it will be like a speed bump, but it will be pretty wide. So the idea is that it can be plowed. It's not something that you would be hitting with a plow uh, intensely. Um, and again, from the feedback that we had, um, this is kind of the, the right location where people would then have to slow down as they get there. So these residents here would, would get that advantage. And then uh, as they go from here to here, they're, they can't really, uh, unless they're, they're crazy <laughs> and they would speed up to another uh, type of speed bump, um, uh, it would really slow down the traffic right, right on, on, on the street. 
and in both cases, the parallel parking and the, uh, there are pros and cons on both of them. And I think we're going to go more into depth on that um, as we as we sit down on Monday. Um, but in both cases, I think it's, a, it's just a better use of the space. Um, in, in, in particular, in, in, in both cases, we've kind of emphasized that entrance that kind of gets a little bit lost uh, in, in, uh, in the way that it is right now. And also providing some more green space um, right on the street there um, that we could use as a potential uh, area for drainage um, and what we call green infrastructure areas where we could actually, instead of overtaxing our drainage systems uh, using a little bit uh, more of, of the natural way that people infiltrate. Yeah, yeah, that water would infiltrate. So um, the still is at a conceptual level. Obviously, the next uh, level, once we get to consensus on this, it will be moving forward and creating some more details. Um, uh, you will see uh, next week we've included some, um, already started including some uh, pedestrian lighting that will be included also uh, along the street, so to provide some lighting uh, along that sidewalk that, we're, you know, the sidewalk that we're proposing, especially right in front of the town office area. Um, so, and, and that's where, where, where we're at with those two concepts, and I think, again, we've, we've gathered all that information that we got from the neighbors and kind of their concerns, the concerns of the town, and, and tried to, uh, when we started, we had like three or four different uh, concepts. We've narrowed down to two, and, um, and we're hoping that that will um, kind of we can create some consensus that we can move keep moving forward. Um, and we also like took out some of the things that seemed sort of more costly than need be, like moving the poles, and instead talked about maybe exactly. burying somewhat some of the transverse wires to clean up the street a little but not make such a big change and expend so much money. Exactly. Um, and clean, what, one of the, uh, the, the objective of what we were thinking of when, when we were trying to move or bury all these cables was to kind of clean the, mm. you would say, the, the, the ceiling as you're driving through there instead of having so many cables. But one, I think the happy medium that we found, and I think it's, it's a good one, is that uh, we've uh, consulted on how much it would be then to bury uh, the services uh, across the street, so you don't have these uh, wires going through. It would be, I think it, uh, I think it works economically. It would work, and, and because we would be already doing all this work onto the street itself, mm -hmm. at that point, it would, it would definitely be uh, advantageous to, to do that at that point. So, Carlos, that's, you, that's you, you, you're, you're, plan, you're planning on putting utilities on the other side of the street? No, no, we're keeping keeping Everything. the utilities on the north side um, yeah. where they are at. We might shift a post uh, here and there so that we can actually. Some of the posts are really badly place right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, um, so we might be shifting them uh, to one side or another. I believe it will be only two of those that we will be shifting. What we are proposing is to uh, bury the services that will go across. So the, right now all these posts, uh, some of them have services that go across to the, to the other side. So burying all those services so that they don't have to be up in uh, up openings. Okay. So, in so Carlos, on, on, you know, the, the library has two, they have an east and a west coming out of the the library parking lot mm -hmm. on the on the east side we put some reverse spikes so if someone comes out the, <laughs> that it would deflate the tires I, 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 I'm just, all just, for just, it. just wondering I just I just I, I would uh, yeah it, it might be a little a little bit intense but um, so, yeah, <laughs> no a little, I, little I, I do agree all right. I, I think all right so so the, the circulation would work would work much better if everybody would do that I think that we are <laughs> the, working on that that's part of the we're, signage we're working on it it's the, 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 the second thing is is that and, and I'm asking you in a, your professional capacity yeah. when, when you design a, a, a parking spot yeah do you, if if you were to put in uh, a um, a charging station, mm -hmm. do you make that parking spot wider? So they they don't uh, actually uh, uh, they don't necessarily need to be wider. Um, they need to have some space right in front of it. Uh, for instance, uh, it, it would need to. Uh, right now, I have in Gothic Street. If you go there, um, there's a the Gothic in Northampton. The Gothic mm -hmm. Street yeah. Yeah. Um, a parking uh, parking there. They basically uh, took out two parking spaces to have charging stations. It's the same size parking space. The only difference is that they've moved, they have the charging um, apparatus right off of it. Um, so there has to be provided some space for it um, so that it's not interfering with either the sidewalks or it's not interfering with any of the other uses. But as long as you have some, I think 
without having to lose a parking space, uh, you can do it. You, you can definitely achieve that by having the, the charging station. I, I don't know if this is the best would it be better to, to do that in the back? To do that, yeah, but in the back and, definitely will be a great thing to do. Yeah, and, and I'm and I'm just and I'm, I'm 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 my my thoughts are maybe is trying to put in a when we get a new town administrator. Hopefully that will be next week or so. Um, one of the things on the green communities is mm -hmm. is maybe look at what it would cost to put in a charging station yes. because according to the CEOs of most of the. Uh, um, manufacturers of automobiles they say the hardest thing is to get is the in infrastructure yeah. mm -hmm. and I know at the university we do a lot we, we put in a lot of charging stations yeah. just and they're being used yeah. more importantly they're, they're being used yeah. so if, if I, I just don't know if that's something that you know if we're looking to, to use green communities and, and stuff maybe we could look at you know, and just looking at potential areas. For oh, sure, I think there is the, definitely the potential there. And it's it's great that you point that out. That Gothic Street uh, parking, it's there's always a car there charging. It's like there's no moment when there's no car charging there. So it, I think uh, adding any of these is a great, great uh, thing for the town. It's a great thing, I mean, for environmentally, and I think it's going to get used, which is more, more importantly, some of these things uh, that are um, green, uh, quote unquote. Uh, sometimes uh, people don't use them, um, and then th would that would that uh, defeats the purpose of doing them. Sure. Um, but I gotta say, uh, my experience is that those uh, charging stations get used cons constantly. They, 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 the they garage ones. Too. Well, as as we're as we're getting more people to use, the, now and, and again, I, you're, you're, the concept that you have now is you, you you're extending the crosswalks down down to the river. That that's that's. A wonderful idea. I, I, I'm, I'm. That, that's long. That's basically long overdue. That's a great thing. And as, as we, as that becomes a more of a, a destination for mm -hmm. people, I, I could see someone with their kayaks on top of the car with, a, with a, a, an electric car or electric sure. truck, you know, cyber truck or whatever it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I don't think the Scott, Scott you know, Scott's like, you know, Scott deals yeah, with electricity all the we day. Can, we can do it. But, but, but we'll again, I, I just see, and and I don't think that I would want the charging station on the on the street, anyways. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe it'd be better in the in the parking lot or in back of the building. Yes. But as we try as we try to tie things in, maybe maybe it's. A, and I was just wondering what what you would use for the spacing. So, I mean, it's not shown here, but there's a big island right in the middle of yeah. this. So that space would be sufficient Perfect. to have actually your, your, your charging station, for instance, in there. Um, and we and then, power in the well, it, in, well, the power, see the power, I mean, for, for us, when we put in a charging station, there, there, there's like 200 amp service to, to most of those charging stations. So there's big ones, yep. There, there, you, like so high my, my question about, my question leads into about what side of the street the power's on because if it's on on that side right make it we we, we need to put conduit under the ground just as a just in case or and right now as as we are it, because of the concept that we have right now because again because we heard what the neighbors said and you know and they, they definitely yeah. were, were not uh you know all for having post on, on their side and and understandably, understandably so we still have one you know one post right here so i mean i i, I don't see how that's we fine could, we could just pull the power from there so no. it definitely Where would work that out. Power, who would that get charged to power company the power company. The power company, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was just wondering also. Now, on you're you're actually bumping out the the grass or the the on this the north side is going to go a little bit to the south, right? Yes, yeah. By the graves, yeah. Good. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Yeah, and that's that's and, and, that and I and I changes from the big white flare to something a little more refined. Much more. Refined. Well, no, I like I like what you're doing at the end of the uh, end of the road because yeah. that yeah. that is. And that is an accident is, waiting to happen over out there. And exactly what you're seeing here, and even in the parallel parking one, which doesn't have as much of that green right in front of it, but still has some green. Both all these uh, bump outs, basically, they're they're bringing in out the uh, the the, the, the green, green area out uh, as a bump out, and that also helps uh, to slow down people. It, no, I I I I think whatever design is chosen. See, I, I could use my my philosophy. So if I I think if we voted on one, then the other one would be chosen. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on. I it's, mean, that's what happens. It's reverse psychology. <laughs> so the but, next, the next issue is how are we going to pay Carlos to get to the 50% construction yeah. documents? And I think there is some money 
we think yeah. from the emails I got from Sherry that yeah. Cindy and I are, were, have reviewed and okay. yeah. yeah yeah the town appropriated funds for design last year okay um, yeah. and it makes sense to think about the electric stuff now because we are planning for the future and this is the perfect time to do it yeah. you know yeah. okay I'd like to and we're on next week for a full-on question answer session yeah, arrows seven. Yeah, seven o'clock yeah. Yeah. Good. Laser pointers. I, laser pointers and everything. I'll, I'll be closer here so that it's not shaking as much. Uh, people don't get, uh, don't get, uh. So again, people who are watching and interested, in particular residents of School Street, but anyone interested because this is effectively the, the corridor to your municipal government, right? Yes. It's a, bit, it's a, it's a, it's a frequently used street in a very short area. So it's important to get the design right, and that's where input is important. So next next week, seven. Yes, exactly. Got it. Sir? This is kind of a, I, I can't be here next week. Um, You're going to Key West. I'm going further. I'm going to Cuba. Okay. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, I wanted to mention that when you've got all these school street people here, it would be good to check in on um, how things are going with the um, the you know kind of nighttime activity down at the boat ramp yep. because there's now a gate yep. um, you know the state installed a gate there and it it the the season's over for right. boating and it, it could be locked I mean it's sure. up to the town right right um, so it'd be good to check in with residents and yep. just see how yeah, how things are and if they I, I know they're um, the um, Rob and Chris down at the end they they had some scary. They've been scared a couple times with what's going on down there, so it'd just be good to check in and sure. see. I mean, that's just a safety measure that could be taken now. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, so Perfect. I just we'll make sure to ask that question. Just yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, as long as you can get kayaks around, and I think walking will be fine. You know. Well, yeah, no, I don't. Kayakers will go. You know. All the They're around. still going out. As long as there's not ice, I'd be out there. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. And even. Uh, as long as you I get some free water. It says, uh, I don't know, look on the sign, if the sign down there says it's closed to, after a certain some date, date certain, sure. You can yeah. take a look at that. And if it is, find a way to close the gate. Yeah. Or maybe or maybe it should be closed at a certain time at night or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's just it's something the town should kind of... Something to talk about. Yeah. Okay. We'll make sure to check in with that. You want to be on time? Yes. Good Thank job. You. I appreciate it very much. No uh, Thanks and, for the update. Uh, I'll see you guys, everybody, uh, uh, and everybody in town. And we'll see uh, on next week. Next week, next Monday, and we'll have better, uh, more uh, graphics, kind of more bringing you down to the street level, so you can get a sense of what really this looks like. Sometimes these plans uh, are a little bit uh, uh, cryptic for people, so we want to make sure that people understand what the changes are that we're doing. Great. Right. Thanks so much, Thanks. Carlos. Thank you. Okay. Can leave these two Village Center. Here. Anything else? Okay. I think that's it. Anything okay. else? We'll leave them right there. Yes. I, I, can I leave have the, something. Public comment or Village Center? Public comment. Public comment. Here we go. Public comment. Ready? Well, this is. Um, I just wanted to um, announce that the um, application yeah. cycle for community yeah. preservation okay. grants but is I will leave these open. The grants, the applications are due on January 30th. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay. Night, Carlos. Um, so um, there, we have an online application. All the information is up on the town website, um, and. Um, we're encouraging community champions to come forward with projects. That's great. Yeah. So again, available at the website. The applications yep. on the website and all the information, the dates. And the the meeting the schedule for initial application review, et cetera, recommendation. Yes. Yep. And then the invariably whatever that application, if it passes, ends up at annual town meeting. So you get to vote on it again. Correct. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, closing date is January 30th. January 30th. Right. Perfect. So it, that's so we can make town meeting. It was, it was as much I'm PSA like as it was public, public comment. Yeah, I like exactly. that. <laughs> nice. Well, enjoy cigars for breakfast on uh, Cuba. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next up, we have minutes from the 26th where we Thanks. were here. Thanks, Lauren. Motion. Mm, second. 
discussion? A motion made and seconded for the 20 meeting minutes of the 26th of November. All those in favor? Aye. Two to zero, please. And oh, love that. Okay. Uh, town administrator search update. So we had a second interview on Friday with one of the candidates. We have two more interviews, second interviews this week, one tomorrow, one Thursday. Uh, and the goal, I guess, would be get through our interviews and uh, deliberate and decide as early as Monday, a week from today, right? There's no reason to go anywhere but this table. The whole process is unfolded at this table, yep. unless you guys see it differently. Huh? Um, I, I, and again, people or, or members of the town have to remember that um, we, we enter, we will vote to um, enter into negotiations. What, what that means is that right. it's contingent upon successful background checks. We, we need to talk to references, right. um, but we can't get to that point until we get to that point. Right. So it, it's it's a it's more it's so a lengthy process. Sure. Yeah. Don't expect an administrator in the next two weeks. Right. It's another stop on the way. Well, it, and and it could happen, sure. but 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 again, it still means that we still have to do our due 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 diligence, meaning that we have to um, we we need to appoint one of us. Uh, to sit down and do some negotiations, you look at the the. the uh, um, the background checks. I mean, we have to have question. You know, we have questions that that'll have to be uh, followed up. So, so it's it's still a process. A good and 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 I and again, I didn't want to shortchange the process because there there's still a lot of time effort that needs to be expended. Yeah, just in negotiations. I think the last the last police chief, not town administrator, the last police chief took a couple of months. It can. Yeah. It, it can. can. It can. Again, that was an example. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, it's, it's the, you know, so it, it really, um, you, you learn a lot about the candidates for the interview process, but you also learn a lot about yourself and the town at the same time. So Fair. It, it's, 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 it's a, an enriching, time consuming process. Yeah. Great point. Okay. Thank you, David. Sir. David, want to add anything or no? No, I think we're expecting an update. No. Okay. Uh, public comment we had going once, and look at they all left. Yeah. <laughs> Oz, you want anything? Add way in at all? No? No. I got nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have an appointment request, Gail Mason of the Council of Aging. And the correspondence reads Hello, Elizabeth Foster. Thank you, Liz. Uh, invited me to become a member of the Sunderland COA. Requested that you consider me for that position. I've been a Sunderland resident since 1999, and while not active in town governance in the past, would very much like to become involved in efforts to, to support our seniors. Thanks so much for your consideration. And thank you, uh, Ms. Mason, for actually applying, or, or considering applying um, for the appointment. Discussion? Uh, I can say at the last uh, Board of Oversight meeting, the three members of the uh, Sunderland COA were there. Um, they are taken. Um, one, one of our concerns, one of their concerns was in shared, um, is about transportation because our, our uh, senior center is actually in, an, in a town covered by the FRTA and we belong to the PVTA. Um, and while it's a foreign concept to me, why it should be so difficult, we learn every day about the roadblocks that some can throw into. So I had the fortunate uh, opportunity to talk with the PVTA um, administrator the other day, and I think that we're we're moving forward on a couple different ways. So we'll see what's happening with that. But I would say that. Um, Ms. Mason would like to join our COA. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, her, her volunteers would be greatly appreciated. Um, and it'd be nice to see an active COA from the town, especially with uh, 120 North Main Street in the works. Right. 
Yep. And 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 we're we're looking at potential thirty three units there. Yep. Yep. Um, and it'll be a, a, a higher concentration of seniors in that same area and I would envision that there'd be an expanded um, services that are, need to be looked at so I'm, I'm all for it 100 percent right David comments uh, no I think it's a great idea so is uh, there a motion? motion motion we have a motion is there a second second we have a motion made and seconded to appoint uh, Gail Mason uh, to the Sunderland Council of Aging uh, for the current appointment cycle, and then it'll come back around again in July. And again, thank you, uh, Ms. Mason, for. Um, so, do you remember what, by chance, what the COA appointment term schedule uh, is? Is it They're staggered? One year at a time, or is it three years at a time, or how is that? I thought they were one, but we haven't had an active board for a really long time. Well, Maybe they were two years. Well, I was also wondering what what committee do we have that's appointed in eight, uh, August? That um, Is it cultural cultural oh. council gets appointed. Well, no, they're random. Okay, there was there was um, one that there. in August. Can, uh, there's there's one one of the committees one of the committees or something that we do we appoint in August. So, I thought we do well. Yeah, we do public wares in March. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just because most of them. Right. Yeah. Got to be able to be out there, yeah. Maybe some so, town so, yeah. appointments, so but could, not. Could we yeah, yeah, follow the appointment yeah. Yeah. process? Yeah, follow the appointment. Wait, check. Next I'll check. I wouldn't say July yet because I, I'm not sure when it is. But okay, I'll so. check. Thank you. In, in, that, in that sense, you're right. Whatever the, uh, it's filling until the next uh, natural appointment. Right. Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And again, thank you, Gail. I appreciate it greatly. I did not get the licenses prepared. It's okay. So. No problem. <laughs> I, was, I figured I didn't no see problem. you in there, so I figured. I know. I'm that'll sorry. Be a long list. That's all right. No I had a little stumble, so I didn't get to no get those done. I thought I'd finish them up this morning, but um, yeah. add them to next week. Not that did not happen. Uh, board updates. Um, Anything else? I understand that the uh, the new proposal was made and the Union 38 contract, so we're waiting to hear back from that. Okay. Anyways, that's all on that front right now. Tom? Um, I just want to uh, thank everybody in town um, the, um, the, for their understanding about the uh, search for the town administrator. Um, it, it's not, it's town minister I mean 20 years it's been 20 years since we yeah that's right put the town this form of town administrator in um, was brought to the town of Sunderland night and I think today there's there's very little um, back back then it was kind of contentious I guess about having a town administrator it was a new form of government for us but I think um, our town administrators over the past 20 years have demonstrated why town administrator is important for the town. Sure so, well. um, yeah, so, so it, it's an important decision for us uh, as a town. Um, so if you watch the, the uh, if you watch the process on TV or, or you have questions, I, I would recommend that you give us a call if you have, or send us an email or however you want to communicate, except throwing stuff at the house would be great and appreciate it. Um, yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's important. It, it's important that uh, I, I, I think that we have um, three very strong candidates and um, it, uh, it, it's been a very interesting process. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's fair. Uh, the only thing I'd add is it just came prior to this meeting. I was at a meeting at Frontier uh, I don't know, fourth maybe or fifth of the Frontier Regional Capital Planning Subcommittee. Uh, again, that's a body that's an advisory to the school committee. And um, I missed the meeting prior to this, but it looks like the COG is going to orchestrate the bid arrangement, both specifications and the purchasing function as, as an, in an advisory role bearing in mind for the uh, um, uh, track work that's 
being targeted to be completed over the course of the summer. So that was part of the discussion tonight. The other part of the discussion tonight was centered around um, how detailed this advisory or this, excuse me, subcommittee is to be on any kind of given project implementation. And I, I, we're reviewing our charge. I don't think that's the charge of the, my personal feeling is, I don't think that's the charge of the group. Uh, they have staff for that. So right. anyway, it was, it, was a, it was a very good meeting and that, that group is getting, getting, its, um, getting its legs under it. That's a good thing. Okay, anything else? Oz, you get one chance. Nada. Cindy, anything you want to weigh in on? Yes, sir. Watch out for Sanders. That's right. Okay. That time of year. It is that time of year. Be careful out there. Motion. There's a motion made uh, to adjourn. Is there a second? Oh, I guess I'll second. Under duress. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning. Aye. Right. Three to zero. Call us out at 720, please.